Today we're gonna to talk about the 21 words and phrases and questions every single salesperson must have and must use on a daily basis. My name is Michael Moriah. I was able to build a team of 150 plus sales guys in less than two and a half years. We did that with zero money invested. Now we have a company that's growing like crazy. We have an investment multifamily company. We have a couple other projects as well that are growing and we're here to help you. If you're in sales or you wanna build a sales team, we're here to help you. So DM me on Instagram or DM me somewhere. We'll talk to you and see if we can actually serve you. So here are the 21 phrases that I love that I've used, in, with, and I told this to all my sales guys, I've used it in every single conversation most of the times and when I was selling back in the day, door to door, store to store, floor to floor, but you have to have this in your repertoire. 21 phrases, here we go. Number one, you popped into my head and I wanted to reach out when I had some time, right? A lot of times there's someone messages people to follow up. I hate the word follow. Never say, I'm here to follow up. No, all you need to say is, you popped into my head and I wanted to reach out when I had some time because you're putting yourself in a position of authority saying, hey, I had some time and you thought I thought about you. Let me say what's up, okay? Number two, say the person's name. The sweetest thing a person can hear is what? Their name. Dale Carnegie said in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Say their name. When somebody when I meet somebody and they say my name is Jacob, I'm like, okay, boom, Jacob. And then I repeat, Jacob, nice to meet you. My name is Michael. Why? I want to remember their name. And by the time I'm done with the conversation, Jacob, nice to meet you, brother. And you know what happens to that individual? Wow, they remembered my name. They feel important. When somebody says your name, how do you feel? Important. So don't forget, the most important phrase, word, or question you can ask anybody in, the, in, in, anybody in the world is remembering their name. Next, right? Number three, tell me more. When a customer's like, oh, I had somebody come by my house already. We're good, we're good, we're good. I understand, Mr. Customer. Tell me more about that. Right? Think about that. Tell me more. It's a powerful question to get more data. As a salesperson, your job is to get, gather more data. So when you say tell me more, they're going to tell you more. And when you get more data, you have more information. When you have more information, you can use that against them to help them and close the deal. Next, number four, I understand, I agree. Listen, <laughs> a lot of you sales guys, I hear it on phone calls, I hear it on doors, it's unbelievable how many of you guys disagree. You do it with your wife, you do it with your husband, you do it with your friends, you do it with your family, you do it with your customers. Instead of just agreeing and say, hey, I understand where you're coming from. I'm with you, 100%, totally. Facts, absolutely, I would have never thought of it that way. You gave me a great idea, I love that. Absolutely, 100% agree, right? You always, 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 always want to agree. This doesn't mean that they're right. It just means that you want to agree. Because when you agree with someone, you put them on the same page, on the same level playing field as you and them, and now they're able to listen to your side of the story. When you disagree with someone, their guard goes up and they don't want to listen to you. And in order for you to sell someone, they have to pay attention a little bit to what you're offering them. So why not get on the same page first, understand them before you are understood. Very important concept. So remember, agree. Number five. I'm glad you were able to share this with me. It's a powerful statement. I'm glad you were able to share this with me because you're letting them know. What are you letting them know? Thank you for sharing. Keep sharing. Keep giving me information. It is safe. It is safe to share that information with me. I'm glad you were able to share that with me, sir. I understand how you feel. As a matter of fact, I knew that when you told me that thing, that, 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 right? You get into the person's heart by understanding where they're coming from. And the best way to do it is to say, hey, I'm glad you were able to share this with me. Next, number six. I see it from your angle, sir. Wow, I would have never thought of it that way. Thank you so much for putting it in that position because I would have never thought of it that way. I like that angle you have. Why am I saying that? Because I want it to be understood. Powerful, powerful statement. I see it from your angle. Very powerful. We use this all the time in sales and we love that, 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 that angle, right? Next, number seven. How does that make you feel? When sometimes somebody says, well, I'm having trouble with my landscaping business, my business is not growing, my sales guys are quitting on me left and right, Instead of saying, well, I got a solution for you, what you should say is what? Let me ask you a quick question. How does that make you feel? How, does that, how, how has that been affecting you in your life and in your business, if you don't mind me asking, right? If you don't mind me asking a personal question, how does that make you feel, sir? It's a powerful question. Guys, this is amazing. Next, okay? Eight, what has self-doubt already cost you? When someone comes to me, for example, on a coaching call or a product or whatever it be, and, and they're like, oh, and, and have all these issues and doubts and, and they don't want to make the investment in themselves. And let me ask you a question, sir. What has this self-doubt and believing in yourself that you can make this decision today cost you today? What has it cost you in the past? I want them to feel the pain of the decisions that they haven't made or the decisions they're supposed to make, right? I wanted to feel a little bit of pain. So I, I asked them, what does this self-doubt cost you? you? By you not making a decision today, by you not making this decision in the past couple of months, how does that affect you and how did that cost you? What is the cost related to that, right? When you ask that kind of question, it's logical, but it's also emotional at the same time. Mr. Customer, if you keep playing it small for another year, what will it cost you? If someone needs to make an investment, for example, in a business or a product, you might ask them, hey, you know, you might ask them, 
If you keep playing it small this way for the next year, two years, six months, two weeks, whatever it may be, what will it cost you, right? What will it cost you? Because sometimes people want to save five grand, right? So Mr. Customer, assuming you save the $5,000 and not make this purchase on this product, what would it cost you if you were to not make this decision? What would it cost you to make this decision? What is the ROI? So you're helping them logically, but also emotionally as well. Next, number 10. Mr. Customer, assuming the product does what it says, what is this product or service worth to you? Think about that. Assuming the product does what it says, assuming the service, we do exactly what we're supposed to do for you, sir. What is this product or service worth to you? You're trying to figure out what do they see from it. Remember, if you're trying to sell a hungry person hot dogs, what is that hot dog worth, worth to him? $5, $10, $20? If he's starving, if he I'll pay $100 if I'm starving. Look at Disney. They charge $1,000 for freaking popcorn, <laughs> right? But if the person is full, it doesn't matter if it's free. You don't want it. So the question is you have to ask them and figure out, right? Assuming the product does what it says, right, and it takes care of you and your family, whatever it may be, what is this product or service worth to you? Very important to identify because if they don't see anything worth, if they don't see the worth in it, the value in it, they ain't buying it. I don't care how, how cheap it is. I don't care if it's free, right? Number 11, Mr. Customer, are you interested or committed to get this result? Let's say somebody wants to lose weight, right? A fat person. They want to get, they want to lose some weight. They come to you, you're a fitness trainer, right? And they're like, oh, you know, I don't know. This is that. And you have to ask them, listen, are you interested in losing weight? Or are you committed to losing weight? Big fucking difference. Because if they're interested, they ain't doing shit. But if they're committed, they're going to get it done. No matter the cost, right? So it's very important to ask these powerful questions. Next, if there is one thing you would change, what would it be, sir? Assuming everything is amazing. I understand, sir, everything's amazing. But right now, with your current situation, if there's one thing you could change, what would it be? Now you're trying to identify what is the problem they have that they wish they can change in their existing service or existing product. Because sometimes people don't make decisions to switch because they're like, I'm comfortable. So you need to figure out what is it that's bothering them with that existing service or existing product. So Mr. Customer, if there's one thing you could change about your current service, what would it be? I used to use this all the time when I was selling telecom, all the time. Mr. Customer, if there's one thing you could change about your existing, customer, your existing service, what would that one thing be? And I understand it's perfect right now, but if one thing, what would that be? And they fucking start ramming one, two, three, I'm like, Thank you, thank you, thank you for the data, right? Number 13, Mr. Customer, from one to 10, how would you rate your product and service right now, right? And if they say nine, I said, great, well, we'll make it a 10. If they say 10, I'm like, perfect, we'll make it an 11. I used to do this all the time when I was selling door to door. Mr. Customer, from one to 10, how would you rate your service right now? Oh, it's an eight, awesome, well, we'll make it a 10. Well, I wish it was faster. Perfect. So if I was able to show you a better product or service that would actually help you get to a 10, would you be open to the idea of listening to me? Absolutely, boom, right? And I would start having a conversation. Or they may be really cocky and arrogant and say, oh, it's a 10, it's amazing. Awesome, Mr. Customer. What would make it an 11? Whoo, hook, right? Very powerful, very powerful. Next, number 14. How long have you been suffering with the competition, sir? <laughs> I love this in the beginning. When I said knock on doors, someone would say, oh, I'm with Spectrum. I was selling Verizon at the time, right? Oh, I, I love Spectrum. I, I know, sir. Let me ask you a quick question. How long have you been suffering with Spectrum, if you don't mind me asking? Right? And I asked these questions, and I'd be like, uh, and they start thinking like, yeah, you start changing their priority because who the hell asked those questions? How long have you been suffering with your current existing medication, sir? How long have you been suffering with your, with your, with your, with your, with your current nutritional plan? How long, just ask people, how long have you been suffering with the customer service you've been dealing with? How long have you been, sir, if you're, sending, if you're selling anything, you can always ask that question, right? How long have you been suffering with the existing customer? Is this existing a product or service? Number 15, okay? When is a good time to revisit this, sir? I have this and this time available. Powerful phrase, powerful question, right? Let's say, for example, you, you, let's say you feel like the sale's not gonna happen, perfect. Mr. Customer, I understand you're very busy. I'm very busy myself. When is it a good time for us to revisit this? I have this time available and this time available tomorrow. What's best for you, right? So instead of you having them say, come back another day, da, 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 and just kind of like throw it into the middle of the air, you now have a place where you can put it in the calendar and have a meeting set up after another meeting. I remember my mentor one time told me, he's like, Michael, you never, ever, ever leave a customer's home or a customer phone call unless you have a meeting set up after the meeting. You have a meeting set up, great, set up another meeting. Always have a follow-up time available. So you don't have a random freaking you know, uh, open calendar, you always know exactly when to hit people up. And they know, it's expected as well. And you're not being pushy, because there's a way to add value, right, in a follow-up, and it's called a follow add value follow-up. If you wanna know more about that, DM me, and I have, it, I, have a, I have it available in my course, it's incredible, and you can literally make so much money with just following up, without having to be annoying, and pestering, and, and, and hurting people, and bothering people, and being annoying. So, if you want that, do, do me a favor, DM me on Instagram, I'll give it to you. Um, uh, next, 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 number 15, perfect. Number 16, Mr. Customer, let's see what you qualify for. 
powerful statement. Let me see what you qualify for. Go for the sale. Shoot for it. Oh, I want to do this. I need to think about it, my wife. I understand, sir. Let's see what you, let, let's get some basic information, see what you qualify for. That was my favorite line. Let's get some basic information, sir, see what you qualify for. They're like, you know what? Yes. As you got that yes, boom, you're going through the sale. A lot of times people just want to say yes. You just got to give them a reason to say yes, right? Number 17, why would you do this with me and not the competition? Powerful question. Powerful, right? So many people don't ask this question. Mr. Customer, I understand you want to go with the competition, but why would you do business with me and not them? And now they're going to start listing reasons. Well, because if you're this, you're that, I like your energy, I like this and that. Perfect. So let's do this anyway. Let's do it with me because you know for a fact that if you do this with me, 100%. You're going to get closer to your X, Y, and Z dream and goal and aspirations, and I'm going to help you and serve you in that process. Let's get some basic information to see what you qualify for. Woohoo! You like that, right? That's how you got to do it. You got to have fun with this thing, right? And I'm going to give you guys some, some really amazing questions and phrases and words that you should, you should remember. Next, um, assuming you make, number 18, assuming you can make the decision to stay with what you have right now, what do you think is going to happen? Right? This can be for picking up chicks as well, right? Assuming you're going to stay single, <laughs> right? Assuming you make the decision to stay single, let me ask you a question. What do you think is going to happen? Right? Assuming you make the decision to stay with what you have right now, what do you think is going to happen? This makes them kind of have a little bit of fear and worry. Well, what happens if they stick with a competition, stick with a company, stick with a product, stick with a service, and now you can kind of come inside and start offering your shit, right? Number 19, Mr. Customer, let me ask you a quick question. Are you more worried about changing or more concerned with staying where you're at and not changing? Mr. Customer, think about that. Are you more concerned about changing and having the hassle of changing, or are you more concerned about what? Staying where you're at and not changing. Which one is more painful to you? So you need to figure out, what are they afraid of? Are they afraid of change? Are they afraid of action? What are they afraid of? Let's do this. So you gotta figure that out. Number, that was number 19. Number 20, Mr. Customer, let me ask you a quick question. When was the last time you were able to make a decision like this and it actually was a win for you? Well, last time I bought a pair of sneakers, it was a win for me, perfect, when else? Well, I bought another product last time. It was amazing. Awesome. So just like those amazing decisions you made in the past, this is the same decision. What you're doing is you're tying their previous wins to this future win they're going to make with you. Right? I don't really like asking, well, Mr. Cousin, when's the last time you had a bad decision? Because now you're reminding them all the pain and all the fears and all the worries. Right? I like to ask them, when was the last time you made a decision? When, it, when was the last time you made a great decision that actually was a win for you and your family when it came to something like this? When was the last time you purchased a coaching program that was actually a banger for you and it was actually a win? Well, I went to Tony Robbins event, it was amazing. Exactly, what else? So I'm, I'm reminding them of all the wins they had in the past and I'm saying, hey, you made a lot of good wins before, this is gonna be the same freaking thing. Let's make the win happen today, okay? Number 21, last thing. Why would you not do this today? Go straight for the kill, say, Mr. Customer, why would you not do this today? And they're gonna give you the real objection most of the time. Well, I just don't wanna do it because I'm afraid X, Y, and Z. Awesome, and then you handle that objection. Which if you want to learn how to handle objections, you got to go through my course. My course will break down how to handle objections like this. You will never have to worry about objection, right? So if you like these 21 phrases, words, questions, do me a favor, DM me so I can give you the course. You can actually get it and learn how to handle some of these things, right? And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next video.